No, 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 don't worry, don't worry. I didn't shoot this video after midnight. Wait, what? It's not, it's not one of the rules? Oh, never mind then. Well, after all, Gremlins is a Christmas movie, so in today's Christmas video, we're going to be having a look at the new released Funko Gremlins Vinyls. This is Gizmo and Stripe. Obviously, it doesn't need a tape measure to tell you that there's some size difference between Gizmo and the, the much taller Stripe. But nonetheless, I push forward with the Ultra Measuretron 5000. I know what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait, that, that guy went way past his head. Where's he going? Well, I'm telling you, heckler in the back of the audience, I measured it to the top of his ears because that would dictate how high the figure stands. The answer to that and the Ultra Measuretron tells us 3.4 inches in height centimeters more happy to oblige 8.8 .8 centimeters for small gizmo and we're going to switch this back over to there we go inches it's not always the easiest thing to finagle i'm going to take that right to the top of stripe's mohawk and stopping right there stripe obviously is taller by how much he's 4.8 inches in centimeters that works out to be 12.2 centimeters in height both the vinyls come with their own included display stands. And luckily, once again, if you are fairly uh, not new to this channel, fairly not new to this channel, you'll know that some recently looked at vinyls only had one single peg on the display stand. This is no different. Both Gizmo and Stripe come with only one peg on the display stand. It just makes much more sense. I don't know why you would want to use two pegs to get the job done. Gizmo, by the way, does stand on his own, doesn't necessarily need the display stand. I could theoretically just throw it into the incinerator right now, but I won't. And we'll answer the questions as to why this gentleman has a giant incinerator to the left of him. Black Hole used to be here. Black Hole's left a long time ago. Now we just have the Ultra Burnatron 7000. I don't know. We're just going off the cuff here. Uh, Stripe is a little bit more trickier to stand, yet he is standing in this review. He also comes with a clear display stand. Looking at them quickly, side by side, they look like they have the same peg. I'm still baffled as to why they include display stands at any given point with s various sized pegs. Somebody says, get to the figures. Let's get to the figures. First, having a look at Gizmo. I quite like this one, but something seems a little off on his face. He seems either really tired or he seems drunk. Maybe it's the fact that he's got his eyelids are partially closed and he's got this weird expression on his face. I guess if you looked at Gizmo in the movie, that's pretty much what he looks like. But he just seems a little weird here, though, in, in his little furry states. He's not quite even fur. He's comprised of plastic. As the plastic goes, it's a pretty good looking figure, but you can kind of see places that would have been molded in, say, for example, the brown plastic, the head, for example. And things like his ears and his lower half, the, the brown is painted on. So you can see that there's not quite the same matching brown. His ears and the, the brown on his arms and his torso here seem to match a similar color, but the brown on his head, being that the head is made of brown plastic, you can kind of see that the brown doesn't quite line up. It's very obvious here, especially when you look at the torso. The torso to the head, it's not the same brown. Nitpick, somebody yells, yes, a little bit. I wanted to hope that the torso could have been a little bit smaller as well. Gizmo is a small character, but I guess it would have made him just a little bit more cuter if he was just shaved a little bit off a little bit more and he was just a little bit smaller. I like the face. Like I said, it's just a little off though. It's it's weird because again it doesn't look it looks like him but then on the other end of it maybe it's i think it's just the smile that's throwing it off for me it's just this very weird perplexing smile that they've given him 
He has no accessories whatsoever. Um, it would very much leave the doors quite wide open if Funko wanted to release, say, a Christmas version of this guy, simply just putting a Christmas hat on top of him. If you had a small enough Christmas hat, I suppose in theory you could also accomplish the exact same feat by just adding a Christmas hat on top of him. Um, we could also see ourselves a Gremlins 2 gizmo, which really could use the exact same mold. I mean, really, this mold, I always like to think that companies want to try to get the most bang out of their molds. The mold itself could easily be used for any one of the Mogwais. Even like a stripe or a mohawk would only require some additional plastic on the top. Being that this is flat and the nose is there, I mean, really, you could paint this to look like any one of the different Mogwais that appear in both Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2. I'm just trying to think of ways to save you money. You're welcome, Funko. Articulation on this guy would be on the same bar as most vinyl figures, except for the ones that are Star Wars and uh, Marvel. The heads swivel all the way around. I much prefer that over bobble heads. And there's little tiny gizmo. Moving along, some food later, and of course some dousing of water to spawn the population of Mogwais, we've got ourselves Stripe. Now Stripe is an ugly looking fellow, an ugly looking chap. Much bigger, much greener, also than Gizmo. I love the scaling that they've added to it, none of which actually is sculpted in there. The nose, as well as the little chin beard, if you will, have all been sculpted into the, the face, but all the little the wrinkles, the scales, all that stuff, none of which is, is actually sculpted. It's painted on there, so it looks really good. There's the back of it. Got some nice coloring between the, uh, the beige colors, a little bit of an outline of orange, and of course this sort of swamp green. Now Stripe always gets confused often with uh, Mohawk. It's come speculation by this point that Stripe is a reincarnation of Mohawk. So here, it's not quite a mohawk, but it is still a mohawk. It's more just like a furrier mohawk than the actual spikes that uh, that mohawk would have in the sequel. Uh, again, I love the face that they've given in this one. It looks like what a gremlin should look if it was in a vinyl figure. Congratulations, Funko. You've done exactly what you needed to do. I think it somewhat looks a little bit better than Gizmo, but I think it's only really, again, the mouth that's throwing me off on Gizmo. I kind of wish that he may have had just a frown and not this weird, irregularly shaped smile, frown, upside down. I don't know what you want to be. Uh, for the uh, Mohawk, or Stripe, I should say, his head rotates all the way around. You could do this until the, the cows come home. In theory as well, making again mention to the idea of reusing molds, easily they could take off the top of his uh, mohawk stripe here, and this could easily be just a generic gremlin. I wonder if we are going to get these guys eventually released as, you know, paint variations. There's possibilities certainly at hand. It's all up to Funko as to whether they want to make use of the existing mold. It's there after all. It's right there. We're looking right at it. Why not make it actually and uh, continue and expand more Gremlins vinyls? I would be all over that. It's been a little over seven months since I shot the initial footage of this review. The part that you saw before Final Looks here was done seven months ago. And during that time, I just want to give you guys the heads up that on a daily routine, I wake up, I go downstairs, I grab my coffee, I grab my mini wheats, and I pick up these figures and sort of just examine them a little bit more. What I've been able to digest approximately seven months later is the fact that I like these figures. I didn't quite feel like I liked Gizmo a lot when I initially picked them up open them out of packaging. The face seems off, but since then, seven months later, I've had a chance to review and watch Gremlins at least several times more so, and uh, I think that the face is accurate. It just so happens it doesn't... It seems off just the, the way that they painted on his face, but I think if his mouth was a little bit more three-dimensional, it would make a little bit more sense. By the way, I say seven months. It's been about seven minutes. Seven minutes later, uh, I still like these figures quite a bit. I hope that we will get more Gremlins vinyls from the folks over at Funko. I mean, certainly, like I said, there's a mold potential right there to reuse existing molds of what we've got here so far to give us just a generic Gremlin. Or we could eventually maybe even get ourselves a Mohawk Gremlin and just changing out the top of his, uh, the Mohawk 2 spikes. And Gizmo, certainly there's the elements there to change him into any number of different Mogwais that appeared both in Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2. You're welcome, Funko. See, it's me. I'm just coming up with some ideas for you guys. I don't have to. 
I mean, we're just looking at the figures themselves, but I'd like to give a little bit extra, a little throw in at the very end. It's sort of that hot towelette that you get at the very end of a restaurant visit. I'm opening it up and pulling it out. There it is, that's for you. I didn't have to do it, just give me the hot towelette. So in the hot towelette and portion, portion of this review, uh, like I said, seven minutes later, not quite seven months later, I'm very happy with this piece and uh, it worked out perfectly that we're having a look at it during the month of December. I personally have to think that Gremlins is a Christmas uh, movie. I think I'm, I'm on the fence as to whether Die Hard is a true Christmas movie. Many people would argue that point. But Gremlins is something I would consider much more as a Christmas movie than I would consider Die Hard. It's not something that I watch every single year, but from time to time I'll put Gremlins in and I'll enjoy the movie. I enjoy the movie every single time I watch it. And I enjoy these vinyl uh, figures from the folks over at Funko. If you guys are interested, by the way, in picking these ones up for yourself, you don't have to wait seven months. Seven months, they'll probably be gone by by store shelves standards but if you guys want to pick these ones up right now you should be able to find them at your local comic book store price point for most vinyls these ones as well will be about 50, i think they're about 15 to 16 dollars where i go that's probably about on average the same price point that you should expect if you want to find these ones for yourself more Christmas videos, guys, will be coming your way as we have a look at other things that you can put underneath your tree. I know we're only like, what, a week and a half away from Christmas? Oh my God, I can't even believe that. But a week and a half before Christmas, that big guy comes down the chimney. Make sure you don't have your fire going at that time. That's gonna get a warm bum. But we're gonna have a look at some other stuff. Uh, more Christmas videos lining up, leaning, leaving, leaning, leaving, leaving up, leading up, leading up leading up to Christmas. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And hey, now, if you also want to go back and have a look at some of my other Christmas videos that I've done from previous years, The Ghost of Christmas Pass, if you will, uh, there's a playlist also there for you. Just look up Christmas spots. It'll be everything that I've done every single year and beyond. So even in the year 2027, when I'm still doing this, you'll be able to find it on the, on the Christmas spots playlist. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.